64 I play a guide and review this time we'll be checking out The Evil Dead released by Pal Software in 1984 you can see it begins on different cracks with different introductions where we can read about this game and the text behind this game is actually more interesting usually than the game itself so let's check out a different crack where they've gone to a different length to explain this game and to give it a backstory which it so desperately needs because the game itself is so flimsy on the inside you can see you can pause that if you want to read that information and so the gameplay what are we supposed to do well we've got all these people in the house and what we're supposed to do rather than free them is to basically combat them and you can see on this screen that we have to get 100,000 points to conjure up a book of the dead 100,000 points ladies and gentlemen is a lot of points to gather in this game this particular crack also contains an ending sequence which we shall see at the end of this review this is the loading picture and I really do appreciate the hair on this woman it's a pity that the woman herself is not so attractive speaking of not so attractive of course we get to the title screen where we get to see the logo the evil dead and 64 version by richard leinfellner Richard Lionfellner also went on to produce Cauldron for the Commodore 64 in 1985. And Cauldron is a much better game than this, so if you leave the introduction to roll, you'll get the introduction sequence, which is a scrolly message giving us another introduction to the game. Welcome to the tragic tale of the Evil Dead. And yet again, this story is a lot more interesting than the game itself, so for starters, let's start at the beginning. And your character is known as Ash, or Ashley, as it says. In case you haven't yet realised, you're looking at me from above. So this is an above simulator, a bit like the stage Back to the Future 2 that you might remember. I'm standing here in a shack which is breathed deep in the heart of the Tennessee woods, in other words, the forest, and out of the door and in through the windows will appear some alien-like green things known as mutant clouds, and they will basically kill everybody in the shack and the shack is split into a number of rooms there's the outside porch with the swing on it this is the main room with the fireplace in it there is also a bedroom as well and the kitchen area so we can walk through the house in this rolling demo there are two bedrooms and the kitchen doesn't appear to have anything in it but we can also go out to the back porch as well where we'll find sometimes a couple of items and the items in this game as we shall find out are very important um, even just by looking at this introduction yes this game only has maybe four or five screens in it that you can actually walk around and so returning to the living area we find our buddies there are four buddies including Linda and Cheryl and Scott and Shelley and your Ash and you are supposed to defend them in the actual movie but in this game you are supposed to get them to die and then chop them all up so this is a shack in the haunted spirit of the evil dead and they will try to break in through all the doors and all the windows which you can close manually but there's no point doing that and one by one they'll turn your friends into green mutants then all hell will break loose and they will be hell bent on attacking me and I can't afford to hang around while that is happening what I can do is pick up a weapon you can see there are four weapons in this game one of those is the sword which is the most powerful weapon and will take the least damage on our energy because as you'll see everything takes energy in this game even walking around and if we punch these guys without a weapon that will demolish our energy the sword is the strongest but it doesn't last very long we've also got a, a shovel or a spade which lasts 
maybe as long, but it's not quite as good. The axe is even better, but it doesn't last as long. And the broom, unfortunately, lasts the most amount of time in the game, but the broom is the weakest item in it. So you really want to find the sword. If you can't find that, find the axe. If you can't find that, you find the shovel and the spade and if you can't find that then you can go for the weedy wooden broom so you have to run around the house collecting those and they will disappear and move around so you have to be quick about it and you can see the alien splits up into its various parts when you kill it the legs and the arms and the body and the head will try to attack as well as I think the guts as well and you can see those flapping around the screen they'll all try to attack you and if you haven't got a weapon that will take the maximum damage on our character. So if we manage to score enough points, and it might as well be 10 million, then the ancient book of the evil dead will appear. All you have to do is pick it up and throw it into the fire, you can see here, and that will destroy the last of the mutants, destroy the curse, we hope, and before that, we'll have to face all that, and that's the easiest heads and done in this game. So, let's forward ourselves back to the menu, and let's try, let's press fire button and try to figure out this game and see how far we get with it. First of all, it gives us a spade. Do we collect that? Well, in this case, no. I'm looking for something a bit better. And we find the broom. So our mutants already come into fruition. We've got the broom as a last resort, but we don't really want to be tackling that. And if you attack it with the broom, it will split up into its various pieces, sometimes all of them dotted all over the map. And you can see, unfortunately, we've just lost a life. And so tackling those mutants, even though we have the weedy weapon in the game it's not really going to do as much in this particular game and the manual recommends closing all the doors and the windows and that gives you time to find a good weapon but in my experience that doesn't really slow them down much and look at that there's a sword so what do I go for the broom that's really intelligent and the sword has just disappeared If the smoke collides with us, or if any of those mutants collide with us in mutant form, then we'll take a hammering in our energy that you can see in the bottom corner. And you can see some score is being made by killing those mutant parts. You can see the sword is blocked the smoke, but now the smoke is a mutant and we haven't got a sword. So if we collide with this enemy, it's going to be another life lost, just like that. And that's game over. That's it. So let's press fire and try that again. So what I like to do is try to find the best weapon first of all, and the best weapon is whatever is available, and in this case a spade is knocking around, I don't really want to try that, but that's the only thing I can do with this mutant running around, so let's trap the mutant, and the weapons will last in our inventory as long as you don't use them, as soon as we start using them then they'll disappear, and well the weapon is holding back the mutant and someone just open the window so I can rush in but stupidly I pick up the broom by mistake and now I have to take on all of those aliens with the broom. <laughs> Now, I don't really want this guy to turn into another enemy, so let's get him outside and take on the enemy one by one with the broom, which is now broken, and he will eventually open the door and let himself in and turn himself into a mutant. I'm trying to find a weapon, but I inadvertently kill this guy, which loses me. Well, it gains me a lot of score, actually, for clearing the entire wave. And now the house resets all over again. I want the axe, but I can't climb out of the window, so I'm going to have to open the back door to get it. That's just changed into a spade. And I really don't want guys around here. I don't really want weapons at this point. And oh no, it's starting all over again. So you can see I've got 18,000 of the 100,000 that we're supposed to get to complete this game by clearing the first wave. And try as I might, I'm really not finding those 
most weapons, but there is an extra place here that you can see and that gives us the sword. That will last maybe four strikes on the enemy, but with the sword, usually it's possible, look at that, to take no damage at all facing that mutant. But we will take damage and you can see the sword is lasting and virtually it helps us and we don't get any extra energy unless we clear a wave and then when we clear a wave we're supposed to get some more energy and that gives us enough to clear the next wave. Unfortunately if you take on enemies like this without the weapons then you really need your hands full otherwise this game really is a handful and it's wiping out my energy and basically trying to wipe out those guys. So there's one guy left, one mutant. If I kill this guy well I might get the bonus for the wave but I might die as well. So that's the end of the game and if you play in the crack version you can even skip to the end level by just collecting a thousand points and when the book appears it actually disappears randomly so you'll have to run around and get the book at the end of the game and normally when you collect the book on the original version the game simply loops to the beginning and you have to do the whole thing again but on the crack version at least we get a special extra which is the comedy humor of the crackers of this game As you see, the Cractro Extra, which is an improvement on the game, which I wish was in the introduction. I'll just give you a lowdown of the scores. CMVG gave the Evil Dead 7 out of 10. Commodore Horizons gave this game 8 out of 10. Personal Computer Games awarded it 6 out of 10. And Commodore User awarded it 4 out of 10. The current Lemon 64 score is 3.3. .3. And your computer awarded this 3 out of 10, which gives this an average score of 5 out of 10. And I'd say the mechanics of this game are very much boring and not a patch on Cauldron, which came just a bit later on from the same guy. So if you like Cauldron, don't bother checking out this. And even this crack trial extra is only the best thing about it because the game is very difficult and boring and there's no energy on the enemies and the energy falls down and those pretty darn quickly. So I'd probably give this maybe a 2 out of 10. <laughs> Thank you.